Um, Tom, Tom Rand, which means um, geothermal technology, green bonds, uh, hydro. Green bonds. Cars. No, green bonds. Today okay, it's yeah, all green, green bonds. Green bonds. Green bonds. <laughs> okay, how to fund all this, right? <laughs> That's right. Okay, perfect. Uh, I might have a PowerPoint, I might not. If I don't, it just means you have to look at me while I'm talking. <laughs> while I look down at my PowerPoint. <laughs> I don't think I have a
infrastructure, in, infrastructure decision making will have changed. So the green bond is meant to flood the renewable industry with low cost debt capital to accelerate its growth and provide a stable, long term economic climate for those technologies to play in. Market hold, right? Not pushing technologies, universities and FDTC push technologies out of the marketplace, help create them. Green bonds pulls them out of the marketplace. Um, why? Uh, well, I'm, I'm going to take for granted that in this audience we understand the free market doesn't solve every problem. But just in case you don't believe that, even Thomas DeCaino, president of the Canadian Council Chief Executives, acknowledges that climate change cannot be addressed by the marketplace alone. And so green bonds is meant to intercede in that marketplace and provide a stimulus. It is not a permanent solution. The only permanent solution, in my view, is a price on carbon. But it is a, an accelerating mechanism. So this is sort of, you know, green is more expensive than coal. You bring the cost of capital down. You bring the cost of green energies down. Later, we will bring the cost of coal up by pricing carbon, but that will take a long time to do. And so green bonds accelerates this transition. This is my solution. We engage the public. The public lends the money. The government guarantees it, passes it through, and accelerates renewable energy production. It's a very simple concept. This has been done before. Uh, we've done, my group has done an analysis on the Canadian marketplace to tune it for here. The European Central Bank issued their climate awareness bond back in June of 2007, 2006. The uh, World Bank issued one in Swedish Krona and recommended that every country do the same. The United States has just had a bill presented for Congress for green bonds to fund their green bank, which sounds familiar. Um, so we can tailor this to the Canadian context because the kind of geography we have dictates that we can be a renewable energy superpower. Right? Tar sands isn't our only resource. Like We have an enormous amount of wind and solar and tidal and wave, and this is designed to accelerate this industry in Canada. I've done some analysis, but I won't get into now, about cost and so on, and why the private sector should manage the money, uh, and as a metric for success. And there's all kinds of complicated stuff I can get to later. You can go to the Green, the green Bonds site and get this data. I cost it out. I compare it to uh, direct subsidies and compare it to uh, tax credits. And removing CO2 with Green Bonds costs between $1 to $13 a ton, which is cheaper than any proposal I've ever seen on the table. And 13 is, is out of the park in terms of, of the pessimism in my financial model is closer to a dollar. I compare it to other policy options. I won't go through this now. But it's better. It's, it's more efficient, it's cheaper, and it's a much broader range of technologies than do tax credits or direct subsidies. So <clears throat> here's the other question, though. That's the financial side. Why a bond? Why can't the government just issue a treasury bill and disperse the money? Public engagement in a positive way on climate change is key, right? The public want to do more than change a light bulb but they don't know what to do, they have jobs, they have kids. The Green Bond provides them with a way to put some skin in the game, to engage on this issue in a positive, growth-oriented way, right? They're putting some money on the table, but it's safe. The government's backing it up. And change in the psychology of the public cannot be underestimated. That's a, that's a, a soft benefit of this, is that every single Canadian gets involved in a policy. Policies aren't interesting to most people, right? They're interesting to policy wonks like us. But the Canadian public would be, and we took a poll nationwide in 2008 by Nick Nallis in Ottawa, and 82% of Canadians uh, support the idea, and 62% said they would buy it. So it has strong public support. And I'm just sort of repeating a, a message here, right, that we're really building a uh, renewable energy industry, and we're seeing our country as a renewable energy superpower, and we're facilitating the deployment of wind on a scale that we would never have seen without a flood of cheap capital into this space. And um, that plug should maybe point a little farther south and we can sell that electricity down to our, our southern neighbors. But if we don't do it quickly, um, they're, are, they're already doing this. People in Pickens is ahead 